Just two days after banking seven million dollars from some of the nation's biggest oil executives, the man who once proclaimed you can't drive a car with a windmill on it has released his energy plan. Today in New Mexico, Mitt Romney vowed to make America energy independent in just seven short years. Here's a taste. How do we do that? Well, that's the next bar. Offshore drilling. We're going to add about two million barrels per day in offshore drilling. Alaska. This is Anwar and other sources in Alaska. That will add additional oil production in this country. Of course, he didn't explain how he'll be able to execute that plan after he gives states the power to release federal land. Congressman Paul Tonko is a Democrat from New York who also happens to be a mechanical and industrial engineer. So the absolutely perfect guess. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you, Martin. Good afternoon to you uh, and your viewers. I guess when your Medicare ideas are a flop, your running mate can't defend his own bills in Congress on forcible rape, and you can't explain why you're hiding your tax returns, well, I guess you just pick a, a date out of thin air and claim you can make America energy independent? Well, when the candidate uh, approaches his campaign by emphasizing his private sector experience and people check the Bain Capital agenda, they ran away from that. When he promoted his role as governor uh, of, uh, of Massachusetts as a reason for his uh, experience to be uh, uh, the choice with voters out there, and we found that he was 47th in job production, uh, they ran away from that. Uh, when he promoted his Medicare solution with a voucher system and people found that seniors would have to dig deeper into their pockets, they ran away from that. And I think they'll uh, run away from their plan uh, shortly when uh, people find out it's another handout to the profit richest oil industry. Yes. Now, we just heard Romney's plan calls for expanding offshore drilling on the East Coast. And according to his advisors, and I'm quoting them, the most aggressive leasing plan ever put forward. But as governor, interestingly, Romney sided with Democratic senators John Kerry and Ted Kennedy in fierce opposition to wind farms off the coast of Nantucket for environmental reasons. Take a listen to this, sir. This is not a decision about money. It's not even a decision about power. It is a decision about our environment, about the legacy we leave our children. It is a heritage given to us by God. We may not, we cannot trash this extraordinary resource that the Cape enjoys. Thank you. <laughs> that is a remarkable piece of footage. Does Mr. Romney have no problem destroying the natural beauty, say, of Alaska, simply because it's one of the few states where he doesn't own a home? Well, you know, I wouldn't want to uh, begin to guess the, uh, the thinking behind their uh, statements here, but it does appear to be blatantly yet another flip-flop. You know, if this is the legacy we want to leave generations that will follow us, that we did not have a concern for the environment, that we did not have concern for solutions here that are driven by physics, not politics, we need to have solutions not slogans. And I think what we have here is a classic example of just drill, baby, drill, uh, when in fact we know that uh, the independence we want is independence from reliance on, uh, on uh, fossil uh, fuels, uh, gluttonous dependency. Uh, and here, you know, they seem to shed the uh, environmental role that we should also bear. If I must, might just uh, apply your knowledge in the field of engin engineering for a moment, the centerpiece of Romney's plan is to allow states to decide how to handle oil, natural gas and coal extraction on federal right. lands within their borders. Now, even if that were to be miraculously passed through Congress, how would that work in practice and how long would it take? Because as I understand it, it can sometimes take up to 20 years to get from a proposal to actually extraction. Well, number one, I think it it uh, does it, it just skips past the uh, the given that we are interconnected in this whole equation. In 2003, of August of 2003, a situation in in Ohio where there was failure in the in the grid system put out lights on Broadway in New York, and it reminded us that with Canada and the Northeast, New England, and the Eastern Seaboard going dark because of that action, that there is this interaction, there is an interconnectedness of the states. And so to now allow states to do their own thing without a national plan, there should be some sort of standards, there should be a plan that we follow that enables all of us to engage with some order of flexibility. But this issue where you 
forego the federal uh, stewardship of the lands, give them to the states and tell them to set up their own agenda is a failure. I think it's a failure that uh, uh, needs to be called for what it is uh, as they propose this plan. It is not creating a divi diverse uh, set of fuels that we can reach to. And if you're going to draw down from that gluttonous dependency uh, on oil-based fuel, uh, oftentimes from, from unfriendly nations to this U.S., uh, then you need to make certain that there is something to prime the pump to address consumer behavior. And they don't mention production tax credits. They don't pr uh, produce any sort of diversity in the mix. And right. I find that very disturbing. I don't think it's a sound energy plan. Congressman Paul Tonko from New York and an engineer to boot. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Martin. It's a pleasure to join you and your viewers. Thank you, sir. Much more ahead, but first, Sue Herrera has the CNBC market.